hello legends. In this video, I wanna show you an NAN Copilot that I started building. I'm gonna paste in a request and I'm basically saying, hey, can you generate me a workflow that starts with a webhook, has a code node, HTTP node, Zendesk node, and then finally ends on a Slack node. So right now, this is only sending this across to a chat GPT completion step. The agent that it's, uh, that's working on this in the back end does not have like a rag database of templates. Um, it's a relatively simple prompt. So the output that we're gonna get is relatively simple as well, but once it generates a response, it actually has a JSON file that's returned. We parse that JSON file on the back end, and then we can click apply to canvas. And then we're gonna get the workflow that was uh, taken from that JSON and immediately added to our canvas over here. So as you can see, we generated a, um, I mean, a pretty cool workflow. I don't think it's not gonna do anything for us anyway, but we wanted a webhook, a code node, a HTTP request node, Zendesk, and then Slack. So you can see, you literally just tell it whatever you want and it'll create it onto the canvas for you. So I think this could be a really cool open source project for us to build together. And I've already uploaded this into my GitHub. So you can literally just go into here, type in NAN Copilot and download the file by clicking this green button, download the zip. And when you unpack the zip, I think the, the parent folder is called NAN Copilot. Then you can go into your Chrome extensions, make sure you are in developer mode and then hit load unpacked. And you'll be able to load in that NAN Copilot folder and you see the extension here. And then finally to use it, you can just uh, drop it down and add your settings. But I'll be showing you all the settings and exactly the flaws with the current version uh, a little bit later in this video. But yeah, it'll be cool if we all worked on this together. Um, I think it's gonna be really easy to build on this if a bunch of people are using this, they're giving feedback, they're possibly even editing the code and then kind of contributing back into that GitHub repo. And then we can you know build this out together and have a really cool co-pilot that is free to use for everyone. So yeah, together we can build an NAN co-pilot that'll be free to use for absolutely everyone. It'll help you build workflows from scratch. So it could probably even have a conversation with you in that chat interface, learn about what you wanna build and then help you build it. Um, you could possibly be in a workflow that has an existing um, like nodes on a canvas. You might have a problem and you can you know just bring up the assistant and say, hey, help me debug this. Um, it could possibly you know screen, screen grab pages. So you could be watching YouTube, and then you might have this little, cause it's a, it's a Chrome extension. You can actually have this little um, chat widget following you for every single page. And then you could say, hey, this is a cool workflow. You might screen grab it from YouTube, uh, put it into the chat, and then it can create a workflow for you dynamically like that as well. Um, another cool use case would be, you might be reading some documentation for API, like on Perplexity API or OpenAI docs. And again, you just open the little assistant, you might screen grab the actual API documentation and then ask it like, hey, can you make me a HTTP node? And then, you know, save it into the assistant. And then when you're in the canvas again, you can just paste it into there. So the use case is actually pretty broad, uh, but right now this has a lot of flaws. So it's just a V1. I literally made it uh, today across a few hours. I vibe coded it using cursor and Claude 3.7 and also GPT 4.1. I'll explain how I did that in a second. It is not perfect. It's not production ready at all. Uh, but I think for an MVP, it does prove the case pretty nicely here. Now, when we're building out in a Chrome extension, we actually have a bunch of different um, actions that we can take on the browser thanks to the Chrome extension itself. So for example, this assistant, you can go into a totally different workflow and it's gonna be able to read the workflow ID and then make changes to that specific workflow. Um, in that same sense, since we're using the NAN API, we can upgrade this assistant to have API that reads the actual workflow. So it could like scrape the page, you can understand, oh, this is workflow 10 or workflow 11. Um, and we can just tell it like, all right, pull the workflow first. It'll pull the existing workflow. We could say we have this specific issue with it. Like I'm running the, you know, the HTTP request, but I keep getting some error or after the HTTP, I, you know, I need to process the stuff. Can you add a code node right after the HTTP? So with the NAN API, you can actually read the entire canvas, pull the JSON into here, um, run an API call to you know, up, you know, improve the JSON or to, to debug it and then edit it and then paste it back into here. So a lot of really cool functionality that you can do using the NAN API, using the actual Chrome extension actions that it gives you as well. And then just you know, using OpenAI or Claude or whatever else. Now, the other thing is when you go into the settings here, um, right now it only works for OpenAI. So you can switch across to Anthropic, but there is no, like that hasn't been coded into this tool. Um, so it's only going to work with GPT 4.1. Actually, I think the actual code is just using GPT 4. So you can act, you can definitely improve it already by just using the 4.1 model. But you generate your API key, you paste it into here, scroll to the very bottom and hit save. And then same thing here for in order for this to create onto your canvas, you have to add your uh, your URL into here. 
So this URL, if I repaste it, sometimes it's like a forward slash here. You don't want the forward slash at all. It's not robust enough to be able to like peel it back and understand what the, what the base URL is. So you just have to put it into here. Um, but I'm pretty sure we can just use uh, Chrome Actions to just pull out your actual um, URL from the tab that it's in anyway. So we can, yeah, there's a bunch of things that we can modify and improve here. This is just an MVP. And then for your NAN API, you just gotta go into your settings. So let's go into settings and then go into your NAN API, create a new API key. Let me just drop this down, create the API key here, generate it, and then copy the value and then paste it into here. So back into settings and then paste it into your API key here and hit save. So one thing I've noticed is if you're not in an actual workflow, uh, that's actually opening up now, but sometimes it won't actually open up. Like if I refresh on this page, I think it'll block me. So if you're using this and you're thinking, oh, it's not working, well, it seems to be working now, um, and it's not working, just kind of like go back to an actual Canvas page, refresh the page. Uh, so workflow number 10 over here. So it's gonna work now, there we go. Um, one thing I do notice is sometimes if you're actually writing a request here and like um, the, it says like your API keys and it's not included or whatever, just before you actually have a chat interaction, just go back into here, all of your keys is, are still gonna be saved, but there's something with how they're being pulled in the browser for the actual active chat session that it just something happens, I don't know what it is. Um, hit save again, it kind of like reloads the saved variables and now you can have your actual conversation with this. Um, you can also just right click, go on inspect and then view all the separate uh, actions that are happening in here. If I just refresh the page, the code has got a lot of uh, logs over here. So you could see yourself exactly what's happening when I pop this open as a bunch of like listeners for actually pressing the button and then logs for when different things happen. Um, yeah, if you're ever making a request and it's not responding or you're clicking the button to add to the canvas and it's not working, just go into the logs. Um, but this code is relatively spaghetti code. It's not gonna be perfect. It's gonna be a lot of issues with it. So if you can contribute in some way and you're finding some like, like let's say you download the code for your own, um, in your own browser and then you run it on cursor and kind of edit the code. If you do anything cool or you upgrade it or whatever, um, I don't really know how you can push updates to here as a community, if there's a way, let me know. But if there's no way to push updates into here, just like, um, yeah, reach out to me in an email. I'll have my email in the description of this video. Reach out and tell me what you've done. Let's kind of like, let's collaborate on this together. Uh, also, if you're if you're like another YouTuber and you watch this video, let's like, yeah, let's join forces. Let's kind of make something really cool for the community as well. Um, so I reckon it'll be really awesome to do that. But um, yeah, so for on the GitHub, you have all the files, absolutely everything that I've used. And if I just open up my cursor, so here we are. Okay, so on the left-hand side, I've got all the files, the same ones that we have in GitHub. I literally pushed all these files from my cursor into GitHub. And to break this down, we've got a couple of different folders. So we have the chatbot folder that holds all the information, the CSS, the, so the styling, the actual structure of the, how the chatbot looks with so the HTML, and then the JS, which is the JavaScript, which is massive. This is like 600 uh, lines long. Um, but all this chatbot functionality, where is it? All this chatbot functionality, let me just close this to make it neater. Everything that you see here, the HTML, the CSS, all the actions when you're pressing the button, interacting with the API, everything is in that um, JS file. So if I just scroll down through here, like you can just take this entire thing, paste it into ChatGPT and ask it to explain it. But again, this is, a, you know, this is created by AI anyway. So there's a lot of, um, all these green comments are here to help you understand. But we have, um, like the API call that we make. I think the prompt is here as well. Let me just try and find it. Yeah, so you're an NAN co-pilot and AI assistant specializing in you know, blah, blah, blah. Here's how you respond. This is what you do. Um, yeah, it's using four. So I think you could just put 4.1 to make this a little bit sharper. But yeah, we would actually have to build out JS to also include the Claude side of things. And then you can probably have like an interchangeable mechanism where you could have a bunch of different models, not just 4.1. And same thing for Claude, a bunch of different models and you know, probably even like Google, um, yeah, Google API, you can put perplexity for web search or whatever else. So we could really expand this out, but I think it just, it's gonna take a, we just have to have a solid plan in place. We have to understand what's the final, like what do we want as the end goal? How do we stage it out? How do we build the first smaller stage first? How do we get the value? How do we get it churning and working um, and get good feedback on it and then kind of keep iterating from there. So. I don't wanna just take this in a random direction. I kinda of wanna like see what people have to say. Like, so if you're watching this video now, if you like this, thumbs up, please subscribe to my channel. 
but comment below, like, here's my biggest pain point, use case, whatever. Um, I think we can really dial in how we, how we grow this uh, app. Um, but the next key thing is within this workflow, within this JS file, there's also a, uh, where is it? There's a section where we're actually parsing the responses because uh, in the actual chat window, when we, when we got the response back that said, hey, add this to the canvas, that was a manual step where we have a separate function that just parses the response, picks up if there's JSON there and then kind of creates the uh, NAN API call. So we could do a lot of different, like, different stuff. Um, here's the NAN API call and I think the parsing mechanism will be here somewhere. Oh, that's how you create the actual package for the API call. But you can go through here, you can see everything. Um, NAN, uh, the icons are just like NAN uh, logos. It's all the same, just different sizes. So you had to have a couple of these sizes to, I think for the, for the app to be valid and the Chrome store. Um, and then settings, so all the settings stuff back into here is just this little drop down. So all the stuff that you see here, the HTML, the CSS, all this, um, the functionality to save all the information as well, that's all in the settings folder. So back in cursor, that's what we see here, the CSS, the HTML, um, everything here, the settings, all this stuff. And then we have extension and page. So these two files, they also have, um, they serve a purpose for the actual app. So aside from the chatbot and the settings, the extension and the page are like the other background processes that are needed. Um, I don't fully know exactly how to build really good Chrome extension, like Chrome extensions, uh, but from what I understand, separating extension.js, which is like the overall extension actions, and page.js, which is actions taken on the page, from what I understand, um, it's good for like best practice, like security wise. Um, but yeah, you guys can come into here and just, yeah, download it for yourselves, play around with it. Um, if you're working on it here as well, like whatever your parent folder is here, you can literally go back into, uh, where is it? Into your extensions and instead of loading packed, uh, unpacked my extension, you can make edits to your own extension, uh, load and packed. And then as you're in cursor editing the actual code, um, it'll just display live. So if you're, if you're literally here and you're editing the code in your own cursor, it's kind of going to like, it's like syncs up to the, to the developer console and you can see the, the changes live. But if you change a core file, like the manifest file, I think then you're going to get an error and you have to like remove this app and then re, re, reload it. Otherwise the changes will not be carried across. So like, uh, I think the front end changes will be fine directly from cursor, but any substantial changes just come back into here and refresh. That's what I did as well. Um, now to explain my process a little bit about how I built this. So I came across a really cool hack recently about, um, building out an MD. So this MD file is just like a project outline file, kind of like when you're starting a new project and then, um, you really want to have a plan. So like, what's the, what, you know, what are we trying to achieve here? What are the ways we're going to get to this? You know, like how are we going to achieve this um, specific goal? So like we want to build an app that's going to be a co-pilot that's going to be working with NAN. Okay. That's like the objective of this. So initially you can go to AI to, yeah, to like prompt, you can prompt the AI to create this uh, project overview file. And I came across this by looking at like cursor tips. Um, but the purpose of this is that when you first sign in the project, this literally outlines the entire project, what the intention is, how different things function together. And then as you're having chats, like in the right hand side, I use a combination of 4.1 and also Claude uh, 3.7. Uh, when I'm doing that, when the chat gets too long and then the AI gets into a, like a circular loop where I cannot solve the problem, I just tell it, okay, cool. Um, update the MD file with the current like um, snapshot of where the app is at. Uh, because then you know, things will change at the start when I was building this out I had like one HTML file that was for the settings and for the chat and that wasn't good And then I had like one JavaScript file for the entire like everything and it was just too dirty too messy So uh, when I updated to have these different folders different folders for different functionality I then had to update the MD file But when I went to the next chat I just say at the very start read the MD file understand what's happening and then it's like, cool, I understand absolutely everything. I know what the, you know, the objective is. I know how the app is structured. I know what's going on. Um, and at the very end of my chat, sometimes like I would switch the chat because the agent was um, in a loop and I couldn't fix the problem. So I would tell it at the very end to just add another section that said current problem. And I would tell it, all right, um, explain what the current, situ like the current situation is, explain what we've tried to do already, what's not working and what you think is the next best step. 
And then when I went to the next chat window and I said, cool, read the MD file, understand the, very, the problem at the very end, and we're working on that problem now. So it was much easier to give it all the context that it needed in order for us to kind of keep moving forward. So this is a really cool hack. I would definitely do it if you're in Cursor. And if you're also watching this and you want some like Cursor hacks, you want a bit more of a walkthrough of how do you actually build this out from scratch? This took me, I don't know, three hours, maybe four hours of just like, oh, what's this idea? How does it work? You know, what's the API? How does all this stuff work um, to build this out? So it's pretty cool. I can move pretty fast with like my method of coding. If you want to see a video on that, let me know. Um, yeah, even like cursor tips and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the end of the video, guys. Um, I hope that uh, this is interesting and exciting to you. Once again, like, please like this video. If you're watching this to this stage as well, like the video. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe as well because it's going to help this video get to more people. It's going to help my channel grow and it'll help me actually do more cool stuff like this as well. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching to the end. Once again, please go to the GitHub, uh, download it, install it, use it, and then give me your feedback as comments in this video. And if you're actually making some changes to this and you have like really cool ideas, just email me and let's collaborate together. All right, thanks guys. See ya.